Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We're talking about flip-flops. Last time we talked about the toggle flip-flop, the T-flip-flop. This time we are going to talk about the JK flip-flop. Well, it works almost like a toggle flip-flop, but with a little bit... No, no, it's, it's more versatile. Huh? Let's see how it is built inside. It looks exactly like the toggle flip-flop. Yeah? So, we have one latch somewhere, yeah? one one bit memory. All right. We have, of course, the C input. Yeah? We have, of course, Q and not Q. We have a S and a R line, yeah? and we have the Q and not Q outputs. So this, this actually is the C input, this is Q and not Q, and of course there's also this feedback again, and I'm using again two end blocks previously, so these are logic end blocks. And the feedback is working via those end blocks. One feedback. Second feedback. And up to now, there's nothing different from the, from the T flip-flop. Then we had here this also like in the T flip-flop. Here, this is also like on the T flip flop. What is new is that we have a second line. So both end can be jammed, uh, particularly one by one. Uh. So we have here a J, uh, and we have here a K input. Uh. Now, with J and K, I can reach different behaviors simply. Yeah? I have right here J, so this is J and this is K. So this is the input side. And here we can we can have a look what is happening on Q and not Q. Let's first pretend J and K are both zero. Right? Up to here somewhere. Right? J and K both are zero. What will and let's also say it's currently Q is not set, yeah, and not Q is there. Here we have a rising edge. Yeah, what is happening at this rising edge? Yeah, regardless, regardless of the state, since J and K are zero, they will, these signals, these feedback signals, will never pass this end. So, J and K stay how they are, yeah? simply. Does not really matter how they are, they stay, they stay that way. Yeah? And now let's say, let's say K, J is here. Yeah? Now we're talking to J, and let's also say K stays zero. All right. What is happening at this rising edge? This one. Yeah. Now J is one, K is zero, Q not Q is one. So here we have one and one. So the set input will be triggered. So we will change here up. This means this will change down. That's it. That's, this was happening. If J is there, we will set this. For sure set this. Yeah? What is happening if it is already set? Let's also have a look at this. Uh, let's pretend we are still on here. And here we are still off. Yeah? So that we see a second edge. How this is working. Here is the second rising edge. We've exacted this state. Well, in this case now, 
this is zero, so we have a zero. This might be one, all right, this, yeah, but it will never reach the S. So it will also stay as it is. Yeah? There's no reason to change. Okay. Now let's switch off J and let's turn on K and see what is happening here. Here we have this rising edge, which is now, now uh, seeing this new combination. Here we are at 1, here we are at 0. So this is 1, K is 1, this is 1, trigger R. So we'll change here, we'll change here, because K is there. So J Let's see what is what, what, what is happening on the second rising edge. Second rising edge. Ooh. J is zero, K is one, so here we have one, we have zero. This is one, yeah, so if one and zero nothing and this is zero one is zero nothing nothing is happening that's easy yeah nothing is happening right? so actually j alone acts like an s yeah? and k alone acts less like an r input there we have also the the possibility to turn on both let's see what is happening if we're turning on both Here is a rising edge. J and K are one. Yeah? Where we do have one, not Q. Here we have one. So we will do a set. Back. Here we do a set. Alright. And here we have a second rising edge. This time J and K is one. This Q is 1, Q not Q is 0, yeah? so S is 0 and R is 1. We do a reset. Aha! Let's see if this stays that way. Let's also have a look at the next, next rising edge. Tick, 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 tick. Of course, the situation is exactly the, the same as as it would it was here. Yeah, so we will set again because both are one. Not Q is one, so at S will be one, and Q is zero, so at R is. So now it behaves like a toggle. Yeah? If J and K are there, it behaves like a toggle, and now it's set. Let's see. If we now remove both, what is happening here? Rising trigger, uh, zero, zero. It will neither be S or R, so we will simply stay that way. Yeah? This is how a JK flip-flop is working. All right. Here we have the T's, T's. So basically, what we've seen now, J alone, is acting like an S. AS input. Okay. Then we have K along. Is acting like an R input. Is it N or I mean, R is for sure, no vocal, huh? but input is. 
I think it's out more correct to say like NS input, like AS input. I don't know. J and K both J and K. means toggling operation. So I can select the behavior with a JK input. I can select the behavior of my of my flip-flop. Alright? There is also a symbol. Yeah? Symbol for JK. Looking like that. Not surprisingly, not that different. Yeah. Then before, so we have here the C input. We have here J and K. This is marked with J and K. This is Q and not Q. All right. Good. Huh? This is the JK flip flop. It's widely used actually. Really widely used. Huh? You often find those type of logic somewhere. Uh, we will also use it later afterwards when we're talking about counters. There are a bunch of J, uh, JK flip flops inside. We'll see. But before we talk about counters and stuff, there is another video. Yeah? We're talking about a delay flip-flop, a D flip-flop. Yeah? How this is working, I'll show you. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.